You know what they say, if you're making your opponents rage, then you must be doing something right. G'day Ziggy D here, and yes, that is the theme of today's Hearthstone video. I'm going to be taking a look at the Priest. I'll be giving you guys a beginner's guide to the hero and to the deck. I'll be kicking things off with a uh, look at the class, at uh, the uh, hero overall, the deck overall, uh, some of the uh, specific cards that are pretty interesting. Then I'll be going into an unranked game uh, with the ba very basic... Uh, priest deck so I can talk about some of the class basics and then towards the end of the video I'll also be doing a ranked game with the custom priest deck that I've been building and having a fair bit of success with I'm still only a mid-range uh, Hearthstone player. I think I'm two or three stars platinum or something uh, But I've been having a fair bit of success with the priest and I've been learning a bit about the game that I should be able to pass on to you guys uh, If you're a more experienced player Maybe you'll want to use the time stance down in the description below to jump forwards to the ranked game but, let's first take a look at the Priest deck. Now, the Priest is a very endgame oriented deck overall. Uh, they're all about getting some big cards out and then buffing them up as much as possible. Because of this, they also have access to a lot of uh, delaying, a lot of stalling tactics. And often, when I play Priest, I won't even make a, a move by the third round. So, you are susceptible to some rushes, but uh, we have some ways of dealing with that as well. So. Uh, there's a bit of a bit of a balance there. Overall, the priest doesn't do very well in the arena because it needs a very specifically constructed deck to be able to do well. Uh, but it does work well in constructed play, and uh, hmm, some some people really like it, and other people really like to hate on it. <laughs> but uh, we won't worry about that too much. We're just learning the game and having a bit of fun, and uh, the priest is very fun. So first up. As I said, we have some delaying and stalling tactics. We have things like Holy Smite, which deal two damage, which take, uh, which get rid of a lot of dangerous cards in the first mm, two to three rounds. They're very good at that, and you can use them to snipe off some things in the later game as well. You can even ping your Gurubashi Berserkers with them to uh, increase their damage and then heal them up shortly after. So they have a few, fair different, uh, fair few different uses there. Mind Vision is a fantastic card which puts a copy of your opponent's card in their hand into your hand. Now, not only only does it give you, uh, you know, their card, give you, you know, a bit more of a card advantage. It's like drawing a card, gives you one of their cards, so you can sort of counter their play sometimes, depending on what you get. But it also gives you knowledge of what one of the cards that they will be able to play soon. For example, if you're playing against a mage deck, you use Mind Vision and you pull a fireball from their hand, you know they have a fireball in their hand, you probably shouldn't play a card that you could lose to fireball uh, in the next few turns, you know, until you know they've used that or until it's not a threat. So, fantastic card, can't recommend that enough, and I, I incorporate that into a lot of my into a lot of my decks. Now, Power Word Shield and Divine Spirit kind of go together. Power Word Shield gives you 3 plus health to any minion, and then Divine Shield doubles the health. So, obviously, when you use Power Word Shield and then Divine Health, uh, Divine Spirit, sorry, uh, that's you can get a lot of health on one particular minion. A uh, favorite of mine and a favorite of many priests is to get your 7 health Gurubashi Berserker, give it 3 plus health, and then double its health up to 20. So then you have a 20 health minion that you can attack with. And every time, as you know with the Gurubashi Berserkers, every time you attack with them, uh, they gain damage as well. So you can keep healing them and you can keep their exorbitantly high health. And that uh, that's pretty much what the Priest is all about, getting those really, really sick, strong cards up. Now, Inner Fire is obviously an, is another very important card for the Priest. I don't have this one yet, and it's one I need to get very soon because it's very cool. Uh, if, for example, you do buff up a minion's health to 20 health, and maybe it's just a, you know, a pretty low pretty low-end minion that only has, maybe it's like one of those those turtles, has 2 attack and 7 health. You buff it up to 20 health with these two cards here, play an inner fire, and you can do all of these in one turn, because they're all very low mana cost. Then you have a 20 health, 20 damage card. The priest is pretty exciting. Now we also have some free silences here, and a free mass heal here, which is pretty good. Uh, on the next one we have Fade, which is another great stalling card. It allows you to draw a card, but also gives all of your minions taunt. Now you have to be careful when you play this because uh, it will, you know, it will taunt everything. So if you have, for example, your Northshire Clerics or something else you want to protect, Fade will taunt everything and also make everything susceptible to attack. So you want to use that uh, at clever times, And but I usually have, your, you know, one of these in my deck because they are pretty handy. Uh, greater Heal is Restore 2 Health to uh, a character for each card in your opponent's hand. Pretty specific one, I've never rolled with it, obviously I don't have it in my deck yet. Uh, I, don't, I can't see myself using that one too much. Mind Blast is a pretty powerful card 
2 mana for 5 damage and often I'll rock 2 of these in my deck and save them because you get towards end game, you have your, you know, a certain amount of damage on the board, you might have 13 damage on the board and your opponent has like about 20 life or something like that. They're not feeling too worried yet, like they feel like they can do something, they feel like they have an extra turn, but this actually takes a full turn off your enemy because it essentially, if you have 2 of these in your hand, which you often will by end game if you've been saving them, uh, you'll be able to deal out 10 damage to your opponent instantly, so it's a great finishing move really, and it, it can be really unexpected if the other player doesn't know you have them. Uh, next up, Shadow Word Pain, another very good delaying card. Uh, destroys any minion with 3 or less attack. That's a lot of early taunting cards and a lot of early dangerous cards as well, like, uh, you know, any mm, some sort of moderate attack cards. Uh, obviously, d that depends on your opponent's deck. If your opponent's playing a lot of things that uh, either aren't very valuable or have higher than 3 attack, then this becomes less useful. But uh, overall, I've found that in general, this is a pretty useful card to have. Light Whirl is a card that a lot of clerics uh, priests send to their deck around, and it's pretty cool. Uh, you have the 5 health there, and it heals 3 health every turn randomly to a damaged minion. So that's very good, especially combined the, with the North Shire Cleric, that whenever a minion is healed, you draw a card. Now this works for both your opponent's cards and your, uh, your minions as well, both your opponents and your minions. So if any minion on the board gets healed, you get to draw a card. Now when you have two of these on the deck and you heal three minions in one go, you draw six cards. So you can get a really big card advantage with clever North Shire Cleric play. And uh, combined with the Light Well, that's obviously very powerful. Another thing about the Light Well is you can double its health, you know, very quickly. You can double it to 10 and then double it to 20 with two... Uh, with two in a divine spirit here, and then you can use inner fire to make this a 2020 card that heals <laughs> So pretty crazy stuff there uh, Thought steel is another one. That's kind of like um, uh, Where was it? Mind vision, but this steals cards from your opponent's deck So it gives you a good card advantage and also gives you a bit of an idea of how they're constructing I think it's less useful more useful just for the card advantage uh, next up we have Mass Dispel, which is a Mass Silence, pretty handy, also it lets you draw a card, so sometimes you can use it for a card draw in a pinch. Uh, yeah, it maths, a Mass Silence can be pretty handy if your opponent's playing a lot of taunts, or a lot of uh, cards that synergize together well. Uh, I've actually used this to fend off like a, um, a Murloc Rush before, where they're all buffing each other up with their different taunts and things like that, so Mass Dispel can be handy in that if you, know, if you can survive to round 4 against a Murloc Rush. Next up is Lightspawn, another interesting priest card that if you buff up, it, it's, its attack is equal to its health. So if you, again, if you double the health on this thing, or if you give it plus 3 health, it'll go to 7-7. Seven, seven. If you double its health, it'll go to 8-8. Eight, eight. You know, if you put the, if you double it up to 7, then, you know, you can d apply a lot of health to it, and it'll uh, keep increasing in damage. It's a pretty cool card. It's also very easy to counter, though, so I'm kind of in two minds about whether I'll keep this in my deck or not, because one silence will uh, counter this fully. Uh, it actually seems to reduce its health back down to 4, and completely destroy, you know, remove its damage and it becomes useless, so, uh, yeah, I've had, I've had this card be out with, like, you know, 2020 and, uh, just be silenced, and I'm like, well, that card's useless now. Holy Nova is fantastic, deals 2 damage to all enemies, it's a great board clear, but it also heals all of your, uh, characters and yourself, too. Um, now combined with the North Shire Cleric, obviously you can heal all of your minions that are damaged in one go. If you have a lot of minions on the board, that's a lot of cards you draw as well. Uh, I don't have too much to say about any of these other cards here, uh, I haven't really used them too much, but some of them look interesting, maybe in a, I'll do a more advanced guide in the future and take a look at that. I did want to talk about Prophet Velen though, which doubles the damage of a healing of spells, obviously a very powerful endgame priest card, and one I'll probably want to eventually get my hand on. And then Mind Control, Mind Control is an amazing card. Uh, it really seals the deal for Priest Endgame, I think. Uh, when your op opponent finally plays the big card, the big, you know, 8-8 eight, eight, or the big 9-8 or something like that, or the Sea Giant or something like that, uh, it's their last hope, you know, they can they can use that card to counter your, your Gurubashi Berserker that you've buffed up. Uh, you play your Mind Control, which is easy to do, 8 mana at Endgame is well worth it. Uh, you can essentially turn this into an 8-8 eight, eight minion or whatever other minion they take. Or you can just pinch a crucial uh, opponent uh, minion off your opponent. So not only is it a removal, but it also gives you that advantage by stealing that card and taking control of it. I really love mind control. It's really exciting when you pull it out, and it uh, it's one of those cards. Uh, there's quite a few cards in the priest deck that really make your opponents rage, and mind control is definitely one of them. So pretty cool stuff. <clears throat> okay, so let's go into a uh, unranked priest game with the basic deck and uh, we'll talk about some of the basics of the class and I'll just try and m do my best to talk through uh, you know 
how things go. Okay, so let's queue up an unranked game as the basic priest deck. This could be messy, uh, especially if we come up against an opponent with uh, a well-constructed deck. Now, I, I think I'm in two or three star platinum, and I think unranked mode does scale based on your actual ranking in ranked as well. So I should be facing off against opponents of my skill level. Uh, you know, based on some of the games I've played recently, that seems to be the case. So, uh, this could be, could be interesting, but I have done some test games with the, uh, basic cleric deck and I've done okay. Now, by playing off against a warrior, I've had bad experiences as the priest, uh, against the warrior, so this could be interesting. Now, although this is a terrible hand to start off with on the priest, I'm tempted to just, uh, fudge all of them. And, uh, we'll definitely be getting rid of the core hound, the sun cleric, maybe we'll keep the gurubashi and see if we can hold out until we can play him off, and uh, sometimes it's it's a bit painful trying to wait for him. We've got the Power Word Shield and the Gurubashi, these are two essential cards, and Ascension, they're actually three excellent cards, we want those pretty soon. Now all we need to do is delay. <laughs> now as you saw there, I just didn't play the Oven Archer even though I could have, and that's because an Oven Archer does one point of damage and then maybe second point of damage on two. That's two points of damage to your enemy, that's not very helpful, it's not really going to get you anywhere. But, an Orvin Archer can be used to ping your Gurubashi Berserker, giving them more damage, or it can be used to snipe an important enemy. We will, however, play our Frost Wolf Grunt, because the Frost Wolf Grunt is not a particularly useful card in a couple turns time. But uh, at the moment, it might serve some purpose, especially if our opponent, Mr. Warrior here, draws a good weapon card. But, uh, doesn't look like it, he's just armoring up at the moment, which is fine by me. If he wants to delay, uh, I can play the delaying game probably better than he can. So, <laughs> we're going to, um, what we're going to do is we're going to mana heal our opponent, because as the priest, it is your duty to frustrate and annoy your opponent in every way possible, because uh, <laughs> that's how the priest works, you know? We just have to get those uh, mana heals happening. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what our opponent plays, he's got a lot of cards at the moment. So uh, we'll see what comes out. But we're in a good position. Next round we're going to be able to put Senjin out if we need to. What did he just play? Oh, he just armoured back up. I, I, yeah, okay, that was weird. Uh, he's played a weapon. We've got two taunt cards. I feel pretty safe. That's good. So we lose our first taunt card against his weapon. We eat up one of his durabilities there. And, ooh, okay, so he's got three points of damage. I am going to play my Silverback this round instead of playing uh, Senjin. I like, I really like Senjin. He's a very useful card to have, but uh, I think he'll be a bit more useful later on. But uh, this will allow us to eat up these three points of damage without losing our card, and potentially even heal it and keep it for a little bit longer as well. Uh, whereas we don't want the Senjin to take any damage if possible, because we want to keep him out for later. Spider Frost Frostwolf Grunt. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that because we should be able to uh, heal. If we take three points of damage, that'll take us down to one. If we heal, that'll take us back up to three. It's not too much that will happen there, so we'll be pretty safe. Now, assuming we want to heal this card on the next turn, we've got another Patriarch here. Uh, I'm going to wait until the next turn to play my Gurubashi and my Power Word Shield at the same time. So we're going to heal up our Silverback again, and we'll let him attack us. Now, I don't think... Um, it might be worth playing my other Silverback this turn as an extra taunt, uh, bit of safety to protect our Gurubashi when we put him out, because we're going to be down a turn's worth of mana next turn when we do play our Gurubashi. So far this is uh, this is playing out pretty well. Uh, pretty much I'm getting the cards I need, uh, I'm delaying safely enough, he's destroying a damaged minion, okay, that's fine. We do have our extra, extra Silverback here, thankfully, and uh, he might well attack, I would say he would. He'd be wise to attack. Charging, however, is probably not wise. I think that's a much more useful minion to have on the board with as an extra 3 damage, but uh, that is his prerogative. Now, we can ping this guy with an Elven Archer, uh, or we can play our Gurubashi and leave him on the board. I'm tempted to do that. It might be a safer move to get our Senjin up first, so we can play our Gurubashi behind him. I want to keep this small amount of damage on the board. Uh, actually, no. I've got two Elven Archers. Uh, I can ping my Gurubashi with my own Elven Archer there. So let's go ahead and play this guy, and we'll play an Elven Archer to pick off his card there. And we'll keep this second one to ping our Gurubashi with, so we can get a bit of extra damage on the next turn. I like this, this is exciting. <laughs> this is kind of like how I like to play Priest, to have these uh, cards work really well together and have the cards I need. <laughs> but I think that's how anyone likes to play any deck in the end. I like Senjin versus Senjin fights because neither of them die. 
He does have a War Axe. I don't know if he'll attack my Sinjin. Yes, he's going to. So that's fine. We can uh, we can heal up next turn and take another hit from that guy. And we should still be safe. Now, hmm. Let's think about this turn a little bit before we just rush into it. Bloodfen Raptor could be handy to have down on the board for a bit of extra damage. Uh, could help us with picking, picking off his Senjin. Uh, his Senjin does three points of damage to our Gurubashi, which is a little bit on the high end. I prefer two or one points of damage. Um, maybe we will be better off playing... Yeah, we'll play our Gurubashi, our Power Word Shield, and then we use our last point of mana to heal our Senjin. And uh, that, that might be the best way to go about this. I think I'm confident with that. As always, if you're an experienced player and you're just watching this for the lols, I would love to hear any of your input or tips on uh, my games, because that is the best way for me to go about learning. Now, I am not going to attack this turn, so we're just going to delay. And I'll uh, see what he pulls out for the next turn. It's going to take him more than one attack to pick off my Senjin, which is nice, unless he has a removal card. Summon. Okay, we've got some Murloc action. I'm not, not particularly... Uh, I'm actually glad for that, personally, because once we pick off his Senjin... Oh, he's going to take... Is he going to waste that on our taunt? Oh no, he's got charge! That's interesting. So he's going to sack, I'm guessing, his Murloc. Why, ooh, I was going to say, why, why would you sack your good Murloc? <laughs> he's pinging our Gurubashi? No, I thought he was going to ping our Gurubashi there. Seven points of damage on our priest, ouch. <laughs> but that's okay. We, need, we do need a taunt now though. So... I'm going to, now I have, ooh, I was going to use this Elven Archer to ping my Gurubashi, but I might be better off uh, picking off his Murloc to con get a bit of board control happening. So, uh, I think we will play our Elven Archer onto his Murloc here, finish off his Senjin, go for the heal, and... Now, we'd be sacking two cards just to get rid of two points of damage. I do not think that is wise. So, I'm going to go for direct attacks here. Now, I can play another Guru Bashi. I don't have anything to buff him up with. Uh, and, uh, you know, if he has if he has a clear or, you know, some removal or something like that, it might be good to have it a backup Guru Bashi, essentially. So, we're going to play our Raptor. Get, get some, a nice amount of damage on the board. We've got a healthy amount of damage on the board now. That's good. We haven't had any other North Shire clerics come out. It would be this would be the perfect moment for them to come out. Once you're starting to get your Gurubashis up and you're constantly healing those guys, uh, having those North Shire clerics out is fantastic. Now, does this still give charge? It does grant charge, so I'd need to be very aware of that actually. See, he's just going for the, the direct attacks it seems. Sacking two on one, I don't even know why. But uh, I guess he, he's a bit worried about the amount of minions I have on the board. Which is good, that means he's not expecting to get a clear, uh, any, any board clear anytime soon. So, we are going to play our Shattered Sun we Cleric here. We're going to buff up our well. Bashi because this guy is what the Priest is all about. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll uh, pick up his Taunt card with him, take two points of damage, buffing our damage up even further. Bringing us up to ten here. Uh, hmm... I won't. <laughs> now my reasoning for that is is I think I can buff up my Guru Bashi even further. He's still got 10 health. I'm feeling pretty confident. He's not going to be able to do 8 points of damage. Like He's not going to be able to attack this and do 8 points of damage with one of these. At least not that I'm aware. I'm pretty sure the Warrior doesn't have any cards that'll do 8 points of damage. Unless he has a pure removal card. The worst is when you you know build up your Guru Bashi for just one turn too long. And he uh, brings out... Ooh, now he has 8 points of damage on the board. But uh, it still needs another dude to take out a Guru Bashi. Now we are going to have to... Hmm, okay. We've got a... Oh, we're in a good position. I'm feeling good. But we definitely need to clear off his stuff off the board right now. Because we are in a dangerous position ourselves. So I'm going to get rid of this card now. Because I'm sick of it being on the board. I'm sick of it having charge. I keep forgetting that it has charge. And we're going to heal ourselves. Oh, maybe I should have actually healed my Guru Bashi. That might have been better. Um, I will kill this guy off, that leaves me with 4 points of health, 12 points of damage. I don't think he'll be able to deal 4 points of health to this guy, but if he does, I've got a Core Hound. I'm feeling feeling good. You know, I, I, obviously with 11 health, I should be a little bit nervous, but uh, this is kind of a good position to be in as the Cleric. 
as the priest. He's got his own Guru Bashi on the board. Give a friendly minion charge. What is he going to charge? He would be wise to charge the Voodoo Doctor. That is what he, that is what he's going for. Oh no, he's just going for the straight charge on me. He's going all out, balls to the wall, damage on the hero, attempting to uh, recover here. Now, let's uh, let's work this out a little bit. Should I deal 12 points of damage, we'll bring him down to uh, nine, and then I can deal five here and five here. We can. Oh, I almost played that. That would have been silly. G, we can GG right now. If my math is correct. <laughs> and that is why I like keeping those cards, cards to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go. That was a fun game. Well played. <laughs> that is how you play the basic deck on the uh, Priest. Pretty good fun. Uh, building up those Guru Bashes is very exciting. And uh, delaying and, you know, holding on by the skin of your teeth is uh, what it's all about. And uh, I think that was a good demonstration. Now, this video has gone a bit longer. So I will put the Constructed Deck game commentary in another video. Uh, and uh, I'll see you guys then. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.